It could be possible, yes, it could be possible, but the, uh, the system is, is made on that way. I didn't tell it, uh, I didn't tell it uh, why how things this federal council. This federal council is uh, composed of seven members of the four main political parties, elected by the parliament every four years, and the president of uh, the president of the confederation is elected every year. We have a president every year in Switzerland, and it's one of the seven. On the same time, he is the president of the, uh, the, the federal council. He leads the, 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 the meetings. He leads the meetings of the, the council. The federal council can be uh, considered as a minister council, and the, the president of the confederation can be watched like a prime minister. But the prime minister that change every year, who change every year, and in order to get more power on the president uh, as a president, should change the constitution. We should change the constitution, and the constitution is a story of the Swiss people. Every amendment to the Constitution is of the competence of the Swiss population. So if a president tries to get more power, he has to change the Constitution. And this uh, would, would never be accepted. Because it requires a popular vote. Is that, uh, was that your question? And are you, do you agree with the answer? You have a choice. That's a fact. Last year or two years ago, there's a vote for Switzerland to join EU or not. And I want to ask, what uh, what did you vote for, and what's your situation? <laughs> okay, the relation the the relation there for, uh, between Switzerland and the European Union is quite uh, an old story since the, since the union exists. Uh, Switzerland is not a member of the European Union. There has not been a vote to come into the to participate to be able to become a member of the European Union. Uh, at the moment, there are discussions. We discuss about it, but uh, at the moment, uh, the Swiss political parties, the Swiss, uh, the, the Swiss, the main the main uh, part of the population is not willing to join the uh, European Union. And as long as uh, it's so clear that the popular vote will be negative, so there won't, there won't, be, uh, there won't be a popular voting. There won't be a popular voting on the, on the topic because uh, people uh, requiring the uh, participation to the European Union, no, it, it, it wouldn't pass. It wouldn't pass. We have, uh, we have a lot of uh, agreements, bilateral agreements with the European Union. We try to have the most, uh, the, the best cooperation with the European Union. As, of course, the, the countries of the European Union represent 70% of the foreign trade of Switzerland. So we have to get a good relation together, but we are not member. And uh, voting on this uh, on this topic is not actual. 
my own opinion. I mean, democratically speaking, uh, we should be member of the, of the European <coughs> Union, but that's my personal opinion. You cannot just have to accept what Brussels decides, Brussels decides, without having the opportunity to discuss with. Because we are a, we are a good part, I mean, seventy percent of the of the foreign trade. We have about uh, 1.2 million uh, foreign workers in Switzerland, of them 80% are from the European Union, uh, European Union citizens. So uh, when Brussels decides something, Switzerland has just to align itself on the decision of, uh, of Brussels without being able to, uh, to participate in the decision. And that's my, uh, that's my own opinion. I would vote yes immediately, but I know I'm a part of a small, uh, of a small minority. More information? Sir, what do you think? Uh, it is what? What is the main reason for Switzerland not joining the European Union? What do you think? What is what, the what's the main reason? Yes. Uh, of course, there is one very, very important reason: is a loss of sovereignty. There are there are many, uh, many competencies that should be transferred to the to the to the union, and the, the, the Swiss people are afraid. So, Swiss politicians. In majority are afraid to lose that the country lose the sovereignty. But sir, I think this is most uh, every other country has the same uh, questions. Of course, but does it? Of course, but uh, the, the democracy is so anchored in Switzerland. So uh, sorry, but let's watch the other uh, the other European countries, uh, the main countries. You have sorry, I come back now. Uh, I'm sorry. I come back to the, to this slide. What is it? Here. You take countries. Italy, presidential republic, with a, with a very strong prime minister. France, a presidential republic with a very strong president. Germany, of course, Germany is a federal state like Switzerland. Austria is a federal state like Switzerland. You take the other ones, Spain, kingdom with a strong prime minister. Great Britain, kingdom with a very strong uh, prime minister. Belgium, federal state that, uh, that is always uh, in a permanent crisis. Netherlands, what is it here? Yeah. Netherlands, kingdom with a strong prime minister. Norway, kingdom with a strong prime minister. Sweden, kingdom with a strong prime minister. Denmark, the same, kingdom. Then we go to Poland, where there is a presidential regime. The Czech Republic, presidential regime. The Slovak Republic, presidential regime, etc. So those, uh, those countries, of those countries, uh, the democracy, in those countries, the democracy is very limited. So that the, the government can take, can take decisions on sovereignty. I mean, in France, uh, for instance, I, I don't remember the, I don't remember France because I'm French speaking and I'm uh, more uh, fr France oriented. Uh, they made a referendum in France about the new pact, the new uh, European pact. But this referendum was consultative. In Switzerland, it would be it would be mandatory, and the decision of the referendum would be definitely definite. In France, it's mandatory. 
So the state, the, the state governments in all those countries can take decisions that have not to be uh, accepted by the, by the population. So, uh, are you satisfied? Thank you, sir. During your lecture, uh, you talked about comparison of the town contents and the village contents. Yes. Um, I'm curious that the village contents, um, it's performing a more democracy, like hand voting kind of way. Um, well, as for the town con contents, like people usually get more education for like more um, like town areas. And I'm just curious why not the count, town accountants have those like hand voting more democracy way than the village part. Power, my dear. Power. In those town cantons, uh, there were uh, there were uh, industrial cantons. Uh, I mean, uh, the in the third and fourth century, there was uh, already some industry and. The corporation, the corporation, got, at, at the beginning, it was a kind of democracy. At the beginning, it, it was a kind of democracy because, okay, the corporation were uh, ruling the, 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 the city, but they were, uh, at the beginning, they were elected, those, uh, those, uh, the members of those corporation. But the corporation that were, uh, the members of the corporations, there were butchers, bakers, importers, uh, sewers, uh, every, uh, every kind of, uh, of working at this corporation. And those people got some education. Those people got some education, what was not the case in the campaigns. Uh, and having this education, having this uh, this ruling, the, the, this right of ruling, I mean, uh, they got the power, and then uh, having the power, uh, you know how it is. If you have the power, you want more power. And here they had the opportunity to get more power. And they, uh, they, they, they decided on herds to impeach other people to come into their corporation, so that there was a small, uh, small circle of, uh, of uh, heads of corporation, and they were, uh, in fact, elected, electing each other by themselves to keep the power. And uh, education, uh, the education, the mandatory education, uh, dates, as well as legal, in fact, Days from the middle of the of the last century, uh, of the 19th century, not very much before. That uh, every uh, everybody has to go to get uh, at least six or nine years education. It's not an old story. And the people of the campaigns, they didn't uh, they didn't have education because they had no time. They had no time. They had to. Uh, they, they, they had to work. They had to, to feed the family. They had to feed the city, and they had no time for education. Just uh, just read. Uh, I don't know uh, the French uh, the French author Emile Zola. Emile Zola that describes uh, the, the life in France at the end of the 19th century. Kids uh, kids went to the to the museum. Had to work with the age of six, eight. It changed. Uh, uh, it changed in the course of uh, the second half of the 19th century and the 20th century. In the beginning of the 20th century, mandatory school uh, was not. Uh,